Good morning. Welcome in the name of the Lord. As we begin today, share just a couple of announcements with you. Um, first of all, we're in the middle of the Lenten season, so we've started on Wednesday night this last week um, with a part of our Lenten skits or dramas that are taking place. If those of you who are here um, will kind of be able to, to notice what we were doing was that it's a kind of a travel itinerary. We're going through different sites in Jerusalem that have to deal with the passion, and so um, we're going to continue that. Last week we were in the temple. This week we're going to be at the upper room as we're going to be talking about Jesus and his disciples um, celebrating the last Passover where Jesus instituted the sacrament of Holy Communion. So you're all welcome to join us on that. Um, before that begins, um, Ann Otten will be leading what she's calling a pre-tour that will be down uh, in Founders Hall directly underneath us here. So if you want to learn more about that site, the historicity of it, if you want to learn more a little bit about um, what it looks like and some pictures from the area and things like that, um, that would be a place to be able to go. Uh, since it is the Lenten season as well, you can see our Lenten food drive is well underway. There are shopping carts that are out in the gathering area if you'd like to purchase some non-perishable food items um, so that we can then share those as well. Um, there's also a basket that's in the gathering area. We're taking individually wrapped candies that we're going to put into Easter eggs for the Easter egg hunt for little kids. Um, that's going to be taking place near Easter, so you're welcome to drop some of those off. And then also here um, at the base of the cross, on that, there is um, a place where you can drop off if you would like to um, Judas purse. Um, basically, what we're going to be doing is that you, you can drop that off there. You can drop it off in the office. You can put those things in the offering plates if you want to. Just a reminder that um, the proceeds from the Judas purse this year will 100% be shared with the church in Estonia. Uh, if you remember, we had Pastor Seaman Hamer that was here, and his story is really quite moving and compelling. Um, just kind of a reminder. Before the Soviet occupation um, during the um, uh, USSR, uh, before the Soviet occupation of Estonia, Estonia was 90% Lutheran. Following communism, Estonia is 5% Christian. So consequently, there's, they're building, rebuilding that over there, and it's a, it's a wonderful cause. Um, lastly, I also want to let you know that um, tonight at 6.30, um, the Junior High Youth Group Oreos is going to be meeting. Um, they'll be meeting here in the gathering area to begin with, and that will be from 6.30 until 8 o'clock. Um, would the congregation please stand? Peace of the Lord be with you all. Please share that peace with one another. We continue with the order for confession and forgiveness as followed from the front of your bulletin. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who writes the law on our hearts, who draws all people together through Jesus. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Held in God's mercy, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy God, we confess that we are caught in snares of sin and cannot break free. We hoard resources while our neighbors are hungry and cold. We speak in ways that silence others. We are silent when we should speak up. 
We keep score in our hearts. We let hurts grow into hatred. For all these things and for sins only you know. Forgive us, Lord. Amen. Here is a flood of grace. Out of love for the whole world, God draws near to us, breaks every snare of sin, washes away our wrongs, and restores the promise of life through Jesus Christ. Amen. Please remain standing. The hymn is hymn number 660. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. <clears throat> for the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
Let us pray. O God, by the passion of your blessed Son, you made an instrument of shameful death to be for us the means of life. Grant us so to glory in the cross of Christ that we may gladly suffer shame and loss for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. first reading for us today may be followed from pages 11 and 12 in the Bibles that are before you in the pew racks. I will be reading from the book of Genesis chapter 17 verses 1 through 7 and then verses 15 and 16. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between me and you, and I will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but you shall be called Abraham. For I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. Here ends the first reading. The psalm may be followed from the insert in your bulletin. We will read that responsively. You who fear the Lord, praise Him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify Him. Stand in awe of Him, all you offspring of Israel. For He did not despise or abhor the affliction of the afflicted, He did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord and all the families of the nations shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. To him, indeed, shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust and shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it. Second reading can be followed from page 916. It's taken from Romans chapter 4, beginning at verse 13. Paul writes, For the promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if it is for if it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there transgression. For this reason, the promise depends on faith in order that it may rest on grace so that it may be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham, who is the father of all of us, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of God, in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations. According to what was said, so shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, 
which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old, and the barrenness of Sarah's, Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do whatever he had promised. Therefore, it was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words it was reckoned to him were not written for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over for our trespasses and was raised for our justification. Here in the readings. gospel reading can be followed from page 820 in the Bibles that are before you in the Purax. I will be reading from the gospel according to Mark, the eighth chapter, beginning with the 31st verse. Then Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed and after three days rise again. He said all of this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any wish to come after me, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father, with the holy angels. The gospel of our Lord. The hymn is hymn number 677. Congregation may be seated. If we have any little people out there that want to come forward for a children's sermon, you are welcome to come forward at this time. How's it going? All right, we're not going to sit down. All right, we're going to stay standing up. You all right with that? Yep. You okay with that? All right, put her there, bud. Nope. Nope. All right. How are you? All right. Oh, we got a couple more coming up. Hey, how are you guys? Good, good. Do um, you guys like to sing? You're tired? Mm. I haven't even started preaching yet. <laughs> All right. So, do you guys like to sing? You like to sing? 
Sure? Yeah. You like to sing? Yeah? You? you guys, are you guys familiar with the song Father Abraham? No? All right. So you're going to have to follow after me, all right? It goes like this. I'll, tr- I'll, I'll do it, and then you guys repeat after me. Father Abraham had many sons. Can you do that? Father Abraham had many sons. Okay, and then the next, next part's kind of like it. And many sons had Father Abraham. And many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's all praise the Lord. So let's all praise the Lord. Okay, so it goes like this. We're going to put it all together, okay? You guys follow me as you can. Ready? Father Abraham had many sons, and many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's all praise the Lord. Okay, and then it goes like this. Right arm. Father Abraham had many sons, and many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's all praise the Lord. Left arm, Father Abraham had many sons, and many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's all praise the Lord. Right leg, Father Abraham had many sons, And many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's all praise the Lord. Left leg, Father Abraham had many sons. And many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's all praise the Lord. Head up, Father Abraham had many sons. And any son, okay, well, I'm getting tired. What about you guys? All right. Isn't that kind of a fun song? It's like an aerobic workout, but it teaches a lesson. What happens is, isn't the Old Testament lesson that we had for today, there was a guy named Abraham, right? And what happened was, is that he was old. I mean, 99. You listen good. 99. And God told him that he was going to be the father of all kinds of people that there were going to be all kinds of people that were going to be descended from him. He was going to be their ancestor. And even though he was 99, even though he was 99, because God promised it, he believed it. And what happened is that, does God go back on promises? No. Does God go back on promises? Nope. God doesn't go back on promises. So it came true. And what happened is that The faith that Abraham had is the same one that we have today. Isn't that cool? So anyway, so let's 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 pray. You guys ready? Dear God, God. thank you for making us your children. children. Children of faith through Abraham. Abraham. Help Help us to pass that along to everybody we know. Amen. All right, there we go. So God said to Abram, who from this time on would be referred to as Abraham, I will make you exceedingly numerous. I will make you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. You will be exceedingly fruitful and your offspring after you and throughout their generations. But I'm getting a little ahead of the game, I think. So let's start here. My old elementary school English teachers will be proud of me right now. Let's start with parts of speech, and it is my firm belief that music helps us to recall things, to learn them, and to remember them. Because when I was a kid, how many of you guys remember something called Schoolhouse Rock? 
You guys remember Schoolhouse Rock on that? All right, so here's the thing, is that um, one of the things that I remember from Schoolhouse Rock was it went like this. It went, conjunction, junction, what's your function? Hooking up words and phrases and clauses. Conjunction, junction, what's their function? I got and, but, or, or to get most of my job done. And I remember that from 50 years ago. But I didn't really want to talk about conjunctions today. Instead, what I wanted to talk about was prepositions. So I looked for a song that might be helpful here. And Jennifer told me that there's actually one on prepositions from Schoolhouse Rock. And she said it was really good, but I didn't know it and I didn't find it right away. So instead, when I was searching the internet for things on prepositions, what happened was is that I did find two kids who came up with their own song about prepositions, but I figured none of us would know it. And besides that, how many of y'all are really good at rapping? All right, well, let's try this one. Give me a beat. We thought after, at, by, in, against, did, up, near, between, to, up, under, down, be, left, through, over, up, according, to, avoid, across, beyond, about, before, behind, within, out, amongst, around, and missed, above, toward, notwithstanding, It's actually pretty good for a couple of amateurs, don't you think? But kind of hard to memorize. Probably Jennifer's would have been easier on that. But prepositions are important in theology. Um, Let me see if I can kind of illustrate that to you. Um, Prepositions are, are important when we talk about things like the Trinity. So when we talk about God the Father, we use words like above and over us. When we talk about Jesus the Son, we we use words like with us or amongst us or beside us. When we talk about the Holy Spirit, we change words again, but just in our prepositional ideology, we use words like in us, ahead of us, proceeding from the Father and the Son. The prepositions help us to understand time place and position. That's kind of what they do. Lutheranism has been described as prepositional theology, in fact, especially because Martin Luther, one point in time, when he was debating communion and how Jesus is not just spiritually but also physically or corporally present in the sacrament of Holy Communion, people ask him how that was as comparison to other, like Catholic theology, and what Luther said was, Jesus' body and blood are present in, with, and under bread and wine. So you get all the prepositions there, right? So then when people said, what do you mean? Luther listed every preposition in the German language. So today, when we're talking about Abraham, today when we're talking about promises, today when we're talking about blessings, I thought, I mean, I really thought, and the more I thought about this, the more I have come to believe that prepositions are really and truly helpful in getting to understand the language of promise and blessing. And the two prepositions that I thought that I would focus on are the words to and the words through. So let's take a look at these words individually to start with. To, T-O, not T-W-O, not T-O-O, to, T-O. Two is a word of location. You know, I went to the store. I went to work. I went to school. It tells us where. But the problem with the word two is that two ends. Two stops. Two actually implies a completion. Two does not tell us anything after the store, after work, or after school. Because once completed, two stops. If you think about this in terms of promise or in terms of blessing, then it would mean that when the promise went to Abraham, it would have ended with Abraham. It would have stopped with Abraham. Like Abraham getting the blessing and then two would imply that it was done, it was complete, it was over. 
but the language in our text for today is that God will make Abraham exceedingly numerous so that it doesn't stop with him. The language in the text for today is that he will be the ancestor of a multitude of nations way beyond himself, way further. The language is exceedingly fruitful. And I don't know if you guys have eaten fruit, but most of it has seeds in it so that it will continue after. The language that we have is that it will be for your offspring after you. It will be throughout their generations. This is not stopping. This is unending language. This is on and on. It's continuing and continual. It's beyond. It's into the future. It's more than just two. It's after just the here and now. Beyond the text that we have for today, the story of Abraham implies the same thing that I'm talking about. We could read that not only will Abraham become the father of a multitude of nations, but it says that his descendants will be as many as the sands on the beach, as many as the stars in the sky, so that it will continue on and on and on and on, not just to him, but through him. And if we were continuing to read in the story of Abraham, it doesn't just say that Abraham was blessed. Although it does say that, but the text doesn't end there. It says that he is blessed so that he might be a blessing. Outward, continuing more beyond. It's less like the preposition to and more like the preposition through, which does not stop and does not end. Through is not like to, which becomes complete or done at some point in time. Through continues. Through goes forward. Through isn't done when it gets to its first destination. It goes through to and then continues. Just as Abraham's blessing was supposed to go not just to him but through him so that the blessing that comes to Abraham becomes a blessing which extends exceedingly numerous, exceedingly fruitful, ancestor of many nations, offspring and beyond throughout generations. Through does not end with Abraham, it begins with Abraham. Two is individual. Through is communal, through is collective, through is global, through is universal, through is Catholic. So the promise to Abraham was not just to Abraham. And the blessing to Abraham was not just to Abraham. It wasn't just to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob for that matter. Because, well, because Father Abraham had many sons. And many sons had Father Abraham, and I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord. Not to Abraham, through Abraham, even to us. But that's not the way I hear people talk about blessings all of the time. And here's where the rubber hits the road. Something good happens to somebody, something favorable happens to someone, and they begin to say, I am blessed. That's true. That's great. But if a person really and truly understands blessing, then instead of ending with the words, I am blessed, the next question should be, why am I blessed? For what reason am I blessed? How am I blessed? How can I make this blessing and this promise extend beyond me to those around myself? And Jennifer and I were talking before service and she said, you know, when they were at the if gathering yesterday, this kind of very thing started. You know, what happens is we often hear people say, hurt people hurt people. How about if we started to say blessed people bless people? See, if it was a conjunction, I would say that 
I wouldn't want to use the word but because that's limiting. I wouldn't want to use the word or because by definition that's exclusionary. And I wouldn't want to be satisfied with the preposition to because that one ends and stops. Instead, if we were going to use a conjunction, why don't we make it and? And if we're going to use a preposition, why don't we make it through? That seems to be more in accord with what the story is telling us. I would invite the congregation to stand. The hymn is number 665. Join me in the words of our, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for our offering.
Jesus, you are the bread of life. Bless these gifts that we have gathered, that all people may know your goodness. We pray this in your name. Amen. Let us humbly beseech God for his mercy upon the church, the world, and one another. Inspire your church to faithfully proclaim Jesus to the world as your only Son and as its only Savior. Hear us, O God. Your Son did not shrink from suffering and death. Grant grace to all who are persecuted for Jesus' sake, so that, so that they glory in his cross and rejoice in his resurrection. Hear us, O God. Teach the people of this congregation to follow Jesus in humble service and cross-bearing. Let everything we say and do glorify you and build up the body of Christ. Hear us, O God. Give courage and joy to our college students and to all seminarians. Keep their faith strong and true. Help them dedicate themselves to caring for other people and glorifying your holy name. Hear us, O God. Through your covenant with Abraham and Sarah, you blessed all nations. Grant to all people, especially those confessing the Abrahamic faiths, the blessings of peace and righteousness, which apart from you cannot flourish. Guide our nation so our words and deeds may please you, the Lord of the whole earth. Hear us, O God. Bless and protect all who stand in harm's way on behalf of others. Give them wisdom, courage, and competence. Protect them and strengthen their loved ones. Bring them home swiftly and safely. Hear us, O God. We lift before you the needs and prayers of all who cry out for your help, including Jean Stevens Hughes, Arlen Seelock, Ernest Johnson, and Stetson Bishard, grandson of Diane McLeod. Grant them the joy of your saving help. Bless all who care for them. Restore them to health and hope. Hear us, O God. Gracious Father, thank you for fulfilling your promises to those who have died trusting you. Comfort those whose grief runs deep. Keep us calm and fearless. Help us always trust your love, which lights our path throughout our earthly pilgrimage. Bring us and all whom you have redeemed, especially Robert Tharp, Brian Nolet, father of Mike Nolet, Leanne Mall, mother of Tara Ostner, and Dolores Walslaven, sister of Donna Herrenstein, to the fulfillment of your blessing, won for us by Abraham's glorious offspring, your son, Christ Jesus our Lord. Hear us, O God. Bless our new child of faith, Marshall Darren Werner, son of George and Caitlin Werner, who was baptized this weekend. Continue to walk with him and his parents in the light of your love. Hear us, O God. For these things and for whatever else is needful, dear Father, we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, we are God's own people, holy, washed, renewed. God bless you and keep you, shower you with mercy, fill you with courage, and give you peace. Amen. We will end with our closing hymn, number 668, O Zion Haste.
peace and serve the Lord.